guys, I'm Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the HasLab Jabba's Sail Barge. That's right, my friends, the very first ever successful HasLab, which if you haven't heard, which I'm sure you have by now if you're following the world of action figures, but HasLab was Hasbro's very first crowdfunding campaign that they ran on their brand new HasLab website, which basically presented, hey, we're gonna do this giant Jabba sail barge, a vehicle that you, the fans, have always wanted and we've never really been able to do. This will allow us to skip retail and sell it directly to you, the consumer. And you know what? It was successful. The fans backed it for $500, including me, $500 per ship. And here we are a little over a year later and that's being delivered and it's in homes and I've got mine right here. Now I'm sure there is no shortage of videos out there on the sail barge at this point, but I wanted to do my own video of it because this thing is pretty awesome and we're gonna dive right into it right now. So first things first, I'm sure you guys have seen the giant boxes flooding social media. Everybody was posting pictures of these giant boxers showing up. Uh, it's amazing to see how huge this box is, but it's got a very cool vintage style to it. Uh, looks pretty great. I took my own picture of it next to my son, so you can see just how big this thing is, bigger than him. It's pretty incredible. When you open up that box, there's actually very minimal assembly required, which is really good. Most of it is already put together. Uh, mostly you just have to put the little feet on the bottom. You do have to assemble the sails here and clip those in. It really doesn't take very long. There's a sheet of instructions with pictures that walks you through it. And right here is what you end up with. So we've got it already assembled. I wanna talk about this beast of a play set or vehicle, or it's both. It's a vehicle and a play set. I just really wanna talk about this. So first thing, Measurements. I mean, you can see how big it is here on camera, right? So this thing is just about a full four feet in length. And from the bottom of the little feet on the bottom to the highest point, which is up here on the top of the sail, it stands right around the 17 or 18 inch mark. So this is a massive toy and it's really kind of heavy too. I mean, there is some serious weight to this thing. Uh, it's solid all the way through. And that is one thing I was so, so happy about. Um, because you know, a lot of the vehicles you buy at retail now, um, especially a lot of the more recent Star Wars vehicles, they are made of a very lightweight, very flimsy plastic. Um, and some of them just don't really have a lot of weight to them, at least not the way we expect them to, or the way we remember the ones we had as a kid. Um, but this right here has definitely got some serious weight to it. I was really impressed with the overall details of this. And look, I'll just kind of spin it around here just so you can see. I mean, it's it's solid, both sides, see? So it's not just a facade or anything like that. All the way through, this thing looks beautiful. Looks just like the sail barge straight out of Return of the Jedi. It's amazing. So on the bottom, you can see we do have these clear little feet. Uh, this is basically to replicate the fact that it's hovering above ground and they're very sturdy. Um, you can see that they actually nice and kind of have a nice soft touch to them. So like when I put it down on the table here, it doesn't keep, uh, it keeps it from sliding and moving around, which is really nice. I'm actually going to spin this back around the other way because all the real fun stuff is on that side that I'm going to show you here in just a bit. So as we're working down, you can see the details are pretty nice. You got the little, uh, the sails over here on the side, the fins, uh, which do have a little bit of articulation. The sails on the top, which you did have to assemble to put them on here, these are actually made of a cloth material, which is really cool. Um, it was a little tricky to put those together, so be careful with that. Make sure you're putting that together right, because you really want to follow the instructions to make sure all the little rods and everything under here are assembled the correct way, uh, but really not so bad, as long as you follow it step by step. And these look really nice. Now, you will notice that it does do a really good job of covering the top here um, and if you want to actually put figures on the top or play or display them you might want to consider taking these off which good news these are removable so let me go ahead and just pop these off for the sake of beginning to show you guys everything that uh, this particular playset has to offer. So you just pop these little sail uh, the sails right off the side there's uh, little pegs on all sides there and then after you pop those out you can actually just pop the actual um, mast right off of the base there. It just plugs in with a little peg there. So I'm going to pop those off. I'm just going to set them on the floor down here. Boom, just like that. And if you guys want a closer look, this is what the underside of the sail looks like there too. It's pretty nice. Actually, I just grab both of these and maybe I can like coast it. No. 
All right, so this gives us a look at the top. We can actually see the top of our sail barge a little bit better. And one of the things that they touted was how there's so much space on this thing, both on the top and on the inside, to display lots of toys. So, you know, if you want to bust out all of your uh, various Jabba's Palace denizens that you've been collecting over the years, which I had to, like, do some serious digging to find all mine, but hey... It's really cool. You've got a lot of room to put lots of different crazy creatures and aliens or reenact scenes from Return of the Jedi right there on the top. A lot of cool things going on, like you do have the large cannon here on top, which does have um, little footholes here, um, you know, for C-3PO, <laughs> or Princess Leia, um, so that she can get on here, she can steer it, and look, you can point it down to blast into the ship. Um, and this is really, really cool too, because Right here on the top, there is this little opening grate right here. So you can actually slide this open, and then you can open this, these two little doors here. And this actually leads down to the inside. There's a little ladder right there, and we'll see more of that once we open this up. But I thought this was a really cool position, because look, if you point the cannon, like that now shoots straight down into the ship, right? So blowing up the sail barge, just like we saw in the film. You've got some more opening hatches here that lead to more staircases going down to the inside, which is very cool. And there's just a lot of really fun little details right here on the top. I love how all the vents have a very cool rust look to them. Um, so the paint deco on this is actually very nice too. It's not just like a solid colored plastic. I mean, they really detailed this thing out, which is awesome considering it cost us so much money. This is exactly what we wanted to see. You've also got these little blasters here on the side, which by the way, you can actually remove these and you can move them around. So it's only it only comes with two of these blasters, but there's actually like so, there's three sockets on either side, so six sockets total. So you could position these wherever you want. So if you want to kind of move those around to have them firing off to the Sarlacc pit to stop Luke or anything like that, you've got the option to do that. So pretty cool stuff there. And there's some other fun little things on here too. A lot of things which are nods to the film, like right here, this little piece of railing. You can actually remove that piece of railing to reenact the scene where C-3PO and R2-D2 fell off the side of the railing down into the sand down below. And that just kind of slides in. So you can actually just pop that right back in, just like that. Uh, we also have a trap door up here. So one of these grates over here, uh, C-3PO, he's just gonna keep being my little test dummy. Um, if you stand him on the grate, and then there's a little button right down here in the front. And when you press that button, your figure is going to fall down to the inside and he actually falls into a dungeon which i'm going to show you here once we open everything up so the top is pretty great there's a lot of room for play up here a lot of cool stuff uh so let's go ahead and start taking this thing apart shall we i want to start showing you guys what's inside the ship um and we're going to start up here in the front but before we do anything let me show you, because basically all the panels on this side are removable, and it's real easy to do that. You just basically, oh, well, you can be a little more gentle than that, but you just basically pop it out and then pull it down. There's just little lips up here that plugs it in and then clips into place. Um, I'm removing this first part first because I actually, you kind of have to reach upwards here uh, to pop out the, the front so you can see the uh, cockpit. So let me do that real quick. There we go. And when you remove this piece on the front, it actually reveals this really awesome cockpit. And you can come over here and get a closer look at this. The cockpit is amazing. There's two seats in there so you can sit figures down. And the detail is incredible. Um, I don't know, I never really thought about this having a cockpit, but it makes total sense. Somebody's got to drive this thing. Uh, the details in here are amazing. You got these bright green screens, uh, lots of little buttons, little red buttons in there, radar dishes. You got that same kind of rusted look to the overall console there. The seats have a great gold look to it. And you can even see these cool little gold uh, head statues, uh, which is going to be a recurring theme all through the inside of this play set. All right, so let's go ahead and just come around and take a look at the rest of what's on the inside here. And we're going to remove the rest of these panels just so you can see how that's done. Uh, basically, yeah, you can just pop them right off the side there. And by doing that, we can actually reveal this whole new playset on the inside with lots of room for display and a lot of really cool intricate details. So we'll start right up here at the front. So I showed you a C-3PO dropping through the trap door. Um, and this right here is actually our little prison cell. There's a sliding door. You can see there's a little latch here that I can just pull this and it opens up and it reveals a little prison cell. So here's 
Here's our CE3PO that we already dropped, and of course you can reach in there and close that trap door, but there's a lot of really fun details in there. First of all, we do have two real metal chains in here um, that you can use to like trap your prisoners and actually put them in the dungeon there. But one of the other really fun details inside the cell is in the background, sitting on the floor, is the skeletal remains of a hammerhead. It's actually pretty sad, but it's a really fun little detail. Now this is a figure that's a uh, part of the display. You can see he moves around just a little bit when I touch him with my finger there, but he is actually attached. He's part of the facade uh, inside that cell, but it's a really fun little detail and just kind of a touch of how intricate all the details are inside this little playset. So we can close that prison door up just like that and moving right along that brings us to our area where we've got a kitchen. Yeah, because of course Jabba's got a kitchen here. He needs to be able to eat all his crazy little frog type aliens and everything, which you can actually see some of those hanging on the wall in the background. But the details are amazing. I mean, check out his cabinets and countertops. Ever wondered what Jabba's kitchen looked like? It's right there, my friends. But we got like the sink right here. There's the little faucet hanging off the wall. You can see there's an oven, including the little oven vent up above it. I mean, the details are kind of unbelievable. It's crazy that they went this far with all the details on this thing. Coming down a little further, uh, this is the area where you can see these are our two little staircases that lead up to the top. And these are our opening hatches that I showed you a little bit up on the top decks. So, you know, you can send figures down these hatches on those stairs. Uh, then we've also got this other staircase up here in the front, which leads to the other big opening hatch that I showed you up there on the top. There's some other fun things here as well. Um, you can see we've got cool little things adorning the walls, like those little golden head statues. On the back wall, you can see a weapons rack. So you can see that there are some things that are mounted to the walls, like those axes. Those are part of the display but you have little hooks on the walls in the back so that you can mount some of your other blasters or uh, Gamorrean guard axes or anything like that. And even right here in the front, there's this little area that allows you to kind of store blaster rifles and stuff like that as well. And if you want more storage, there's actually a hidden compartment here as well. This right here lifts up. We can remove these grates and we've got a space to smuggle uh, C-3PO or whatever. Look at that, it's a little smuggler's hole right there. So you can hide uh, figures, you can hide weapons, you can hide cargo, whatever you want right there. Cool little cargo hole, perfect for smuggling. So then that's gonna bring you down to the main event of this whole play set, which is Jabba's throne room. And of course, this includes a Jabba the Hutt action figure. Brand new Jabba the Hutt it looks like here. Uh, he's got solid construction, really nice deco on there. He is articulated at the arms with elbow bends there. Uh, and you can twist his upper head there. And he's got his little dais that's sitting in here. And it's perfectly molded so that Jabba sits right on there. Uh, it's got a little feature in the form of it moving. It just kind of moves side to side. It doesn't actually come out, it's attached. But that's one of the features is that you can move it side to side so you Jabba can see everything that that's going on. But the details inside here are really, really amazing. This is some of the best stuff. There's like this marble sculpture on the wall right there. That's Jabba the Hutt with all of his little denizens around him, which is absolutely amazing. It's a gorgeous detail. And up above that, we've got like this golden head or bronze head of a Gamorrean guard, just like a cool little trophy piece there. And if you come all the way around up here to the front, you can see even more of these little trophies. Like there's a trophy piece of like a Rancor monster hanging on the wall up here. And even all of these little uh, dividers right here with little windows, they have like these almost look what look like little Rancor arms kind of adorning them on there. It's really amazing. Plus we've got all these little control panels and everything. This is where things get really exciting because there's a lot of space in here for displaying your figures. You'll also notice like the finish inside here is so much different. Um, if you look at the floor underneath Jabba, it almost looks like he's got these really nice hardwood floors. Now, of course this is plastic, but it's styled to look more like a nicer, fancier hardwood finish rather than the cold kind of rusted metal that's over here on the other side. So it really shows you Jabba's line of thinking, like this is his throne area. It's a much nicer area for display. And of course there is a lot of room in here to start displaying lots of other characters. You know, you could put your Slave Lay in there, uh, Bib Fortuna could hang out in here if you want. There's a lot of room so that you could really fill that out with lots of different characters. 
So there's a lot of really fun things going on inside here. Um, and if you want to just put it all back together, it's pretty easy to do it. Basically, you're just going to take all of these little latches right here and you just plug them right back up into the lips on the top, clip it all together just like that. Um, there's some other cool features here too that I, I failed to mention up at the front. So let me show you that here real quick after I put this back together. Um, it's all about recreating a lot of scenes from the movie. So to help you with that, some of the other things they've got, like there is an opening window here on the front. So if you need uh, a skiff guard or somebody to come out holding a blaster so that he could try to blast at Luke, you've got that little opening window right there. Uh, there's also opening windows on the backside behind Jabba the Hutt, so you can open those up as well. See, very easy to clip it back together, get our front piece back on here to cover the cockpit, and just like that, our sail barge is basically all the way back together. Now, of course, along with the job of the hut, you also do get included the exclusive Yak Face figure. Um, now, this figure itself is getting a standard retail release, but what makes this version special uh, with the sail barge is that he's coming on the vintage style card back with this coin. Um, so that's the only way that you're going to get it is if you got it with the sail barge, uh, which makes this a pretty special piece. Plus, it's an odd to, a, a nice nod to the vintage toy line where this is one of the rarer figures from the vintage toy line is the act face. So my friends, that right there is Jabba's sail barge. It's a pretty spectacular playset. Now, uh, this is one of those things where you really start to ask yourself, is it worth the $500 that it initially cost? Um, and I think that's just going to be like with any toy, any big purchase like this, it's totally in the eye of the beholder. A lot of Star Wars fans have waited years for a playset like this. Uh, it's always been something that has been really big. We don't see a lot of big, heavy playsets like this that are this detailed, that have that many features hitting retail stores this day and age. Um, and of course, with inflation, prices have gone way up and a lot of these big playsets do cost a lot. So $500, yes, it's a lot of money, but it's really detailed. There's a lot of displayability here. There's a lot of great intricacies. The paint deco is awesome. There's some really fun features. So I really think Hasbro did a great job maxing this thing out and giving us something very, very special. Um, also, these things were made to order through HasLab, which means as of right now, the price on these is probably only going to get higher on the secondary market. So hopefully everybody that wanted one was able to pick it up through that initial campaign uh, because I doubt there's going to be a chance of these being available through retail means uh, anytime soon, if at all, ever again. Uh, personally, I'm pretty glad I picked this up. With uh, Return of the Jedi being one of my favorite films, with the Jabba stuff specifically being my favorite part of the Jedi movie, um, this is going to be an awesome display piece in my collection. Collection. Uh, I have always loved having a Jabba's palace scene in my collection room and now that's all just going to migrate to like being basically with the Jabba sail barge here. I'm going to open this up, I'll find a great place to display it, fill this up, just load it with characters from the film. It's just a really fun um, centerpiece for your collection. So there you guys go. There is a look at the brand new HasLab Jabba's sail barge. I hope you enjoyed this look. If you did, hit that like button, leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think. If any of you picked it up, let me know what you think of it. I'd love to hear from you guys. Until next time, my friends.